By 1969, eight years after we'd signed up with Columbia, we just ran out of steam. And Tommy Makem gave us a year's notice. It wasn't a fight or anything like that, but he said, I want out. Ah, ah but Tim, he stuttered from the land. Yeah. I knew the game was up when Tom got a call from his acting agent down in Hollywood said he had a part for him I think it was in a little house on the prairie or one of those things and he's on the phone and he's swigging out of a, a bottle of 25 year old brandy that somebody had given me and he uh, smoked a big cigar he was playing the part of being a Hollywood star again you know <laughs> He said, yeah, Jeff, yeah, I can do that. Sure, such and such a date, yeah. And I tapped him on the shoulder and put his hand over the phone. He said, what is it, little brother? And I said, we're booked to be in Australia at that time. We've signed the contracts. The tickets are on sale. And he said, hold on a second, Jeff, and put his hand on. He said, get off my fucking back, little brother. I said, okay. There were constant conflicts about, uh, I think, about money, about what songs to sing, about uh, what managers to have. What I didn't know all the details, but there were, in my, in my opinion. And yet they were brothers, so you learn never to interfere too much between brothers. <laughs> we were down in Washington, just finished the club, came back to the hotel. I rushed up to the room to change. Phone was ringing. It was my brother Tom saying, I have bad news for you. Lovely sister caught, just killed in a car crash. And uh, it was the first time that I, that I just, I kept saying to myself, it's broken, the family is broken. What had been a complete entity was, was gone. And uh, went back to Ireland to the funeral. The day of her funeral, her little grandchild who was in her, on her lap when the car crash happened, uh, died. And uh, it's a bad time all around. But after the funeral, I got together with Paddy and Tom and we were down in Petey Lawler's, our old haunt, having a drink, you know, he said. Uh, you have to find a replacement. I said, I'm not going to work with you anymore. Hey, what the fuck do you mean? You can't do that. This is family. It's time to stick together. We're brothers. I said, I can't be the little brother anymore too old for it. But these tensions had been evident for some time, and the usual showbiz succession of bad deals and hidden tax bills had also taken its toll. And Liam, along with his young wife Kim and their two children, found themselves facing a bleak winter in the deserted summer resort of Cape Cod. Just before Christmas, one year, I uh, Stony broke two kids. Now we were in the freezing cold winter, bitter, bitter cold. We had a little black and white television. Got a second hand, Ernie and Bert, for the kids. Didn't know what the hell to do. My wife, Kim, made a phone call to her sister out in Calgary, Alberta. Just say hello for Christmas. And uh, her brother-in-law, 
Leo was his name, Leo Cote. He listened to the tale of woe and he said, God darn it, Liam, you get on the next plane here and get the family out and we'll, we'll do the basement for you and you can live here and I, I'll put on some concerts. And <laughs> I was laughing about it. Didn't think it was that simple, you know. But by God, I tell you, we packed the hall every week, every Tuesday night, sold a pile of beer, started making enough money to live on. About the fifth or sixth concert in, this long, lanky Scotsman comes to me and he says, would you be interested in doing your own television series? I said, I certainly would. He says it's just local, but, you know, it'd be great. Sonny carries a load He's barely a man There ain't all that much to do But he does what he can And he watches the sea From a room by the stairs And the waves keep on rolling They've done that for years and for years and at the end of 13 shows, we were noted 26 shows. And because I love you, I'll give it one more. I asked Tommy to come out, fly out and be a guest on the, on the show. And uh, damn, but they, they didn't the show win a Canadian Emmy, the best half hour entertainment. <laughs> And the company asked us if we do 26 more shows. By the end of that time, we had 13 and a half hours of new material. Tommy Makeham and I. Drink up the cider, drink up the cider. For tonight will the lady, we'll knock the middlemaids over and roll in the clover on the corn song. And so are we. Our last guest on the last show was Archie Fisher from Scotland. Said, I'd love to produce a record with you guys. Went up to the record studio up in Calgary. We recorded 11 songs. We needed the dozen. And we we're scratching our heads and he said, I've got a song I think you'd be really interested in. It's called, And the Band Played Waltzing Matilda. I kept myself alive. And he sang it for me. And I couldn't sleep for three nights thinking about that song. It was so powerful. And a big turkey shell knocked me arse overhead. And when I awoke in my hospital bed, saw what it had done, and I wished I were dead. Never knew there were worse things than dying. Sent the tapes back to Ireland to uh, Morris Cassidy. At the time, he was doing bits and pieces for Tommy Makeham. Sent a telegram back sent, saying, uh, congratulations, we got a hit on our hands. A man needs both legs. No more waltzing I collected the wounded. us back home to Australia. The armless, the legless, the blind, the insane, those proud wounded heroes of Sula. And when the ship pulled into Circular Key, I looked at the place where my legs used to be. And thank Christ, there was no one there waiting. back on the road again <laughs> and they say lightning doesn't strike twice so Tommy and I started a whole new career worked for 13 years together and really got back on top made a whole pile of records oh, 